Hey guys, welcome to, I'm pretty sure we're on day five of Bookmas. I technically didn't do a video yesterday, but I did two videos the day before, so it all works out. Throughout the next couple weeks here, I'm going to be doing some videos sharing my favorite books in different genres. These are like recommendation videos because these are my favorites. They may not be other people's favorites. And I thought I would kick things off with manga, which is a whole new medium. I feel like that I have been loving this year. I think I've tried... I can't remember if this is the first year I've tried it or not. I did not like it the first time I started it. Manga I, it originates from Japan and you read it backwards from how we are used to it in English. Thankfully most manga actually when you open it the normal English way it tells you that you're reading it the wrong way and it gives you um, like specific uh, the ex specific examples of how you're supposed to read it, which order you're supposed to read it in. So that can be helpful. Although manga does take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, it's amazing how natural it is for us to start on the left side of the page and read that way. But to go from the right and you start at the top and you work your way down, but like kind of in reverse. So I have some really great manga that I have loved this year. I've explored quite a few different series and some of them have been great some of them have been complete misses but i thought i would give a little bit of a warning if you are new to the whole manga world because the books the illustrations often make them look cutesy and if you're going into it thinking you're getting a cutesy little story most of the time you're going to be shocked because and i believe that i was told this on one of my patreon book clubs because uh one of my patrons has done a lot with reading manga and stuff and she was saying that even like just the Japanese uh, story form I don't remember exactly how she said it but like they often have like a very dark element to them that's just how they tell their stories and that is often the case with manga it's like you're you're going along and then all of a sudden you're like whoa I didn't expect it to go that dark and it's not necessarily a bad thing I don't think but I think you need to be prepared for it I wouldn't put most of the manga I People have asked me like what ages they'd be for, when I would let my kids read them. And I think I would probably say like 15 plus for most of them. Um, even though they look like they would be cute little kid novels, they're not generally. So with that out of the way, I have a list. I don't have a lot of them with me, but I will try to insert clips that I have taken over the last year as I've been reading them. Um, and I wanted to start with a couple that I think are really good for beginners. The first one is perfect for beginners because it's kind of like a manga graphic novel. Uh, each page is kind of its own comic. It's called Wonder Cat and as a cat family uh, this is a, the great novel for us or a, it's, yeah it's not a novel it's it's really just a bunch of short little comics about this guy and his cat and the, I mean it kind of does follow a little bit of a story but pretty much every page is an individual little story that builds a bit. Uh, but this is good because if you start reading it the wrong way, uh, I feel like it, it's just a little bit easier to remember in this one and you're not going to get like spoilers on the next page if you start on the wrong page. And I think a lot of them were just three panel stories. So you just read it like up and down. You didn't have to worry about the whole counterclockwise reading idea. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed Wonder Cat. Yes, it's it's about a guy and this this cat. It's a little bit of a, like a fantasy element. And the only thing that I wish I wish it would have been a female instead of a male because then I could have like seen myself in the author slash uh, main character's shoes a little bit more. But I really enjoyed it. I read the first and second volume. I can't remember if there's more out than that already. One thing I should say about manga is a lot of them. While they are available in physical copy, they're often being translated from Japanese and usually the best way to be able to read them, which I have not done yet, is to get a subscription. I think there are a couple or one, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, like a company or something, I'm totally blanking on like the right word here, uh, where you can get the subscription and you can get access to them like as ebooks and then you can get them a lot faster. I've been very tempted to do that. 2023 might be the year where I sit down for like a month or two and just read a bunch of manga and like get caught up because some of my favorites 
are much farther online than they are in print and I would like to read more of them. So next up for a fairly basic beginner I think in the manga world, I've only read the first volume of this one. This is Beyond the Clouds. I actually just shared this in a reading wrap up. So far this hasn't gone very dark. Our main character is this boy living in kind of like a fantastical world because there are creatures that are like half human, half animal, and he likes to go to the junk heap and he's an inventor so he takes bits and turns them into other things. And one day he comes across this girl on the junk heap. She uh, is missing a wing and in this world creatures with wings are highly valued and he's worried that people are going to be after her so he takes her and hides her and tries to help um, make a wing for her. And it it does get a little bit like there are people after her so it's a little scary but it's not like dark like manga often gets. Um, I've really enjoyed this and just got a bunch of the other volumes out from the library because I want to continue this story. And then continuing in the like fairly light, getting maybe slightly darker, uh, Snow White with the Red Hair. One of my patrons and subscribers here sent this to me for my birthday this year and I was really excited she sent volume one and two. I had never heard of it before. I read more of the volumes. I think there's like 20 some. I'm not that far yet though. So it, it starts out with, I think the author wanted to do like kind of a Snow White retelling but it doesn't stick with that for very long. Uh, one of the things I do like is that she, at the beginning of each of her stories, she has uh, little retellings of different fairy tales. So this one it has Cinderella, um, and I know at the beginning of each of the other books has a little fairy tale, one or two panel little story. and. Um, so this is about a girl who, in the country she lives in, the prince wants to marry her because her hair is red and that's very rare. Um, but she, and so she pretends to go along with it. Yeah, she's going to go to the prince the next day. Um, but then she actually runs away to the next country. And then like as she gets into the country, she comes across this random group of people in the woods and kind of falls in with them, becomes, becomes friends, and very quickly fairly quickly, realizes that one of the guys is the prince of that country, so the second prince, uh, second born prince. Uh, yeah, and she is a herbalist, and I don't know, I've, I've enjoyed the story. I like where it's going. There are some really interesting characters, some where it's like, what are, what's, I can't tell if they're going to be good or bad yet, and I've just enjoyed the whole ride. Um, I've read a number of volumes, can't remember exactly where I'm at, but have really enjoyed this. Then if you've heard me talking about manga at all, you've probably heard me talking about Spy Family. This is kind of the book that got me started. I don't even know, oh I think it was Tia. I'm pretty sure it was Tia that I heard talking about it and the illustrations, especially of the second volume's cover, really captured my attention. So this one is about a spy who has a mission that where he needs to get married and have a kid. So he marries a woman who he doesn't know, but she's an assassin, and he adopts a child who he doesn't know is a telepath. <laughs> and it's so interesting. So it, this is a, in a fake country where there's a lot of, um, I can't think of the right word, like there's a lot of issues and there's like secret police and there's different things going on. Um, you have to be very careful with a lot of the political stuff and so he is supposed to get his kid enrolled in this prestigious school so that he can get close to this uh, person that he's supposed to get close to and <laughs> it's very interesting first of all because the daughter is a telepath she can hear her parents thoughts and she knows that her dad's a spy and her mom's an assassin but she also knows that they don't know it about each other and it's very interesting um like it's it's such a cute little story in so many ways and then when we follow the mother uh, when she's doing her assassination work then all of a sudden the book turns quite a bit darker um but for the most part it's it's pretty light and funny and oh except uh the mother her brother comes into play in a couple volumes later and he's like excessively obsessive with his sister and very possessive and he, he's a little weird like they that whole relationship is a little strange um 
but I've enjoyed the story and that's one that I'm caught up to, was caught up to what was published. A new one just came out so I'm waiting for the next, uh, for it to come in from the library. But that's one that I definitely think I need to get a digital subscription for so that I can continue with the story a little bit more real time. Okay, next on my list, this is one that I really hated the first book, the first volume. Uh, but I decided to continue because I could see where the author was going. So it's A Silent Voice. This one, we have two main characters. One is this boy, I think it starts kind of like middle school, and then the other one is this girl who comes to this middle school, uh, and she is deaf, and he is the worst bully to her. I can't remember now the number. I think he broke like eight of her hearing aids in the span of one year, or something crazy like that and he is just horrible to her throughout the entire book. Teachers notice him being horrible, don't do anything, like nobody stands up for her, and I I just wanted to put, like go into the book and punch him myself. Um, and it ends in a way where he is realizing that he's made some mistakes, and so then you know like it's gonna get better. So I, I gave the first book two stars. And so I decided to read book two or volume two because I thought I thought I could see where it was going and would probably be better and I was right. I give that one five stars and I do want to continue it. Sometimes this this is one of the ones where it feels like the storyline is just going to get drawn out uh, with manga often having so many volumes depending on the series. Uh, sometimes I feel like authors kind of stretch it just because that's kind of what's needed uh, or wanted. They often are released in chapters, so there's like multiple chapters per volume, um, and so I get it, but I f it, that's one of the ones that feels like it's gonna, I'm gonna be done with it before the series is done, but I did really enjoy volume two, and unfortunately you have to get through volume one to get to volume two. The next one is The Promised Neverland, and this is kind of like a well, I thought it was going to be like a Peter Pan retelling, but lots of people warned me that it gets dark, <laughs> and boy does it ever. Uh, so it starts out with like this, you're in this orphanage with these kids, and you, like, they have a wonderful time, like they're talking about how great their life is, but you're noticing that something's not right. Like, the kids all think they're having a great time, but there's something going on underneath that isn't right, and... I don't want to give spoilers, but it gets dark real fast. And I'm actually, I haven't read past volume one, but I'm actually curious to continue because I think the characters, um, they definitely have an enemy to fight and I'm curious to see how they go about it. Uh, that's all I'll say. I don't want to give spoilers for that one, but just know that it's not a cutesy, like Peter Pan retelling, like I had initially thought. And the last one on my list is Hunter Hunter. So if you follow Murphy Napier, Napier online at all here on booktube. She has like read so much more of this than I have, but I've heard her talking about it for so long. I was like, okay, I gotta read it. And I went into the first volume thinking I wasn't going to enjoy it, and I quite did. I've only read the first volume so far. It's very different than a lot of the other ones that I've read. It's, it's about a boy whose dad is off doing something, um, what, like, they're so often they're like they're kind of like fantasy stories they're in their own little world um and sometimes i have troubles understanding where i'm at it takes a little while to get through it or to like feel like i get my bearings in the world uh, but i also kind of do struggle with fantasy a little bit that way in general so that's probably just a me thing he i think really wants to be a hunter is that what it's called now it's been a few months um and so he has to go through these trials and he meets these people along the way and they have to go through these different tests to see who passes and the book actually really captured my attention and i would like to read more of the series i'm not like super into it like some people but i did enjoy the first volume okay so that is a roundup of the manga that i have liked the best in this last year uh there have been a lot of duds some that i tried and were just like blah and some that were like yeah no like hard no uh, but if you guys have manga suggestions i would love to hear them if you've read any of these i would love to chat about them with you in the comments um yeah today let's just talk all things manga and then i will be back tomorrow for yet another bookmas video.